Yeah, I, I think, you know, Combsy has kind of done it in two different ways both both years, but I think um, he's kind of found some roadblocks or obstacles or things to figure out and has made adjustments. He's got some savvy to him. He's a hard worker. He's extremely coachable, um, and he's throwing the ball really well for us now, which everybody standing here, including him, know that's key for our team. Um, and then, you know, kind of still a little bit of frustration from, well, what else is down there, you know? I think Snead has done a good job for us. Um, we kind of know what we got with Stom. He's an older guy, and yeah, he had to fight through some soreness. So I don't think we got the real version of him until now. He's kind of gotten in a rhythm. And, you know, Kirby throws strikes, cost of doing business. When you got a lead, you definitely want strikes. And sometimes they hit it, sometimes they don't, especially when they're one of the better guys in the, in the country and Tommy White. So, um, you know, I think as each week goes by, I think we feel more comfortable about the guys we've been using. We're eager to use a couple guys that we haven't. Um, and then also, I, I think we feel more comfortable about maybe who belongs where and how we can just put these guys in a, in a position to succeed. Um, just keep pushing forward. Um, again, whatever cliche you want to tie to that, but um, guys just kept moving in the right direction because you know, we never really had a big fireworks display on offense. Defensively, I don't think we played one game that was incredibly clean. Um, pitching at times, you know, today with the one walk was huge. But, um, you know, it, it wasn't the prettiest weekend overall. So just keep pushing in the right direction. And I think, too, there was a lot of guys that were just ready to play. I mean, my theme, I said, to, to go on a tangent, I think it's proper to share what we were talking about in the outfield with the guys was um, – Today was about guys being ready to go physically and mentally. And Combs was down there all weekend, and we made him wait till the very last go of it. And, and he was ready to rock and roll, throw his stuff up there and see what happens. And it worked out well for him. And then, you know, Brad Key, his at-bat allows a lot of different things to happen for our team. Um, and, you know, if I'm Brad Key, I transfer in from a JUCO, I want to be out there every single day. But his approach and his bounce and his spirit when he's in the cage before the game, even though he's not in the lineup, is exactly what you'd want. And then when he gets out there, it's no more Mr. Nice Guy. He competes. And then the, the more important or most important guy for me, just because it's been 10 years since he's been here, is Ethan Payne. Um, if, if people at the game, you know, only understood how much time went into that bunt, not only just executing it, but making it look easy, it would blow your mind. But he's the very definition of what it takes to be a good baseball player. You got to do it day in and day out, regardless of what the result is. And um, he's going to have a special career in life when he's done with our, our time here. How much do programs need guys like that? I mean, everybody talks about the stars and the guys that get drafted, but how much do programs need those guys do? I think in order to achieve what the program we just played um, achieved last year, you know, guys like Cade Beloso and other guys like that, any winning team I've been a part of, um, you know, since I've been here, but I'm reflecting back on, on other ones. And then, you know, times two when it's gone awry, you're, you don't have enough of those guys. Um, I think you can always kind of point to a figure that maybe you see as a, you know, a good team guy or, or, or whatever it might be. But um, he's a very unique one, and he's huge. I mean, it was young, much younger in his career. We decided to either bring him on trips or activate him on the roster um, because we thought he, he could help us a little bit on the field, but more he, he could help us, you know, in the dugout in the clubhouse. There's so much free time to baseball, and what goes on during nine innings is, is the most important. Don't lose sight of that. But at the hotel, out to eat with the guys or parents, uh, talking in the locker room, at the hotel, you know, all those spots, it's huge. And he's an influencer, not Instagram in a bikini or anything like that, but he's an influencer. Uh, speaking of Brad Key and Payne, just the team's ability and willingness to play small ball, how much is that kind of allowing your team to take that next step? Uh, I think it adds to what we need to be able to do in different environments. I mean, um, you know, eventually you win enough games to go to Hoover. It's, it's the most fun place to play in the world. Um, and in order to score down there, sometimes you got to play small ball. And then even in our park where some people label it, I think, unfairly, incredibly offensive, depends on what day it is. It depends on who's pitching and other circumstances. So the more ways you can find a way to win and the more ways you can find a way to score, um, the more complete your team is. And I don't think we've kind of, going back to the pitching thing, the more we kind of got options down there in the bullpen as well. I think we're sorting through a lot of that and still building on top of what our foundation is of just a, a good group of guys that play hard and they, they certainly have team chemistry. 
well, that's great. We've had all those things for a while now. We need to keep, you know, adding on attributes that'll help us win. What's been different for Combs these last two outings? I think pitching a little more um, instead of just throwing. But again, um, I kind of stay out of the, the master's way, Coach Anderson. Um, and, and I think Combs has been determined to, first of all, get out there. At first, we labeled him, you know, a certain situation and it didn't pop up a whole bunch. So he, he, he really you know, didn't have an opportunity to get in that rhythm or get cozy out there. And uh, hopefully the fact he was able to throw today allows that. And, uh, you know, I kind of went on a, another tangent with John about how inclusive a weekend is or how all-inclusive, not, uh, not Cancun or Tulum or anything, but every everything counts. And uh, Snead, Snead got hot on Friday and, and came out like a madman yesterday. So there was only so much he had to offer us today, and, and Combs doing what he did uh, was enormous. How big, was it for, uh, how big was it for Xander to be able to go the distance he went today and uh, build on his past couple of SEC starts? Yeah, I, I think it, you know, allows him to understand that we believe in him. Uh, I think last weekend was one where I think literally in the middle of the game I had to answer a question from a, a former coach that's really smart, like, why'd you take him out there? And we just went with what we think. I mean, we have so much – all these SEC teams have so much data and support staff and, and things like that, and at the end of the day you go with your gut. Um, but our gut tells us anytime he's out there, we're good with whatever happens. And you could tell the vibe in the dugout. The guys love him when he's out there, and the position players certainly love playing behind him too. What were you going to say? How much confidence do you have in the A lot. Um, I was going to joke and say more than I should, <laughs> just because he and I um, kind of rib each other. I guess I rib him more than he can do back to me because he wants to get in the games. But um, any situation. And, uh, you know, there's one moment this year to have any regrets at all. Um, you know, well, I guess there's several regrets. Anytime it doesn't work when you make a move, you second guess yourself. Or you wonder what you could have done different. But I, I can think of a key moment where he would have been perfect for that situation and we didn't use him. So that's my best way to describe it without BSing you. But he's got great presence and he obviously has good stuff, too, and he wants to be out there. And it's a resilient arm. We could have used him all three days and. Um, he wants to be out there too. It was not a good look or a friendly look he gave me when uh, I told him we were going to make a change. But again, we kind of went with what we, we originally planned to do and felt was best. But Andrew, just how much flexibility does that give you handling the bullpen going into the weekend, feeling like it can give you four to two innings? Uh, I think it leaves you less scrambling in the other games. And again, I, I kind of already said to it, and I think our fans are becoming some of the best fans in the country for baseball. Um, but there are some newbies. And I think, again, you still got to realize what goes on in a series. It's very difficult to win a series in general. So uh, it made me nervous as all hell, our fans yelling sweep when the last hitter is still up. And there's plenty of – Tommy White's standing there waiting to do some damage. You, you know what I mean? Um, so everything affects everything. And because you got a little bit of security there and you know a guy that's going to throw strikes and compete, it, it changes the conversations in the office and certainly some planning as well and to our benefit. Yeah, and I, I think together is the key word, the, the way they interact with one another. Um, obviously, Simo and Blake have a, a ton of history here together, but also just with the program. And then I've, I've said it too many times, Billy fits in in an odd way so well and gets along with those two guys uh, a whole bunch that they're, they're doing it together. And I think they realize, um, you know, how much we love having them, but probably how much of a headache they are um, when the game starts and you see those three guys are going to kick it off and KT when he's himself um, and not trying to do too much is, is waiting in, in the wings as well. But, you know, those three guys are a headache for other people. And you talk about the weekend. The one thing we know is we've got those three guys to kickstart us anytime the game starts or the lineup rolls around. What are the things that you love most about this team? The, the midpoint of SEC play, what are kind of those things still out there in this week? Yeah, again, I, I think that um, – you know, we're kind of adding different ways that guys can help us, whether it is playing small ball, who's the best situational guy to pinch run. I think Ariel now is obviously a defender that I think um, can impact the game in a big way. Um, so he's been useful. And I think some other guys have gotten past some early season trying to do too much or wondering what is their role. Um, but there's still stuff up for grabs. Like I said, I think we're, we're fighting to find, I told John, fighting to find our exact, exact best, you know, nine guys. But it might change every day based on who's, you know, on the mound over there and, and how guys are feeling, like it or not. 
things kind of come in cycles and guys do throw a little better as the season goes on or a guy may have a hiccup or give up a run or two. So um, really, I just think it's a general theme of we've got a lot of things we can pile on a strong foundation. And I think the guys are willing and have the right attitude to, to move forward to, towards that.